Everybody pray for me. It's been a day for me. Yeah, yeah. All right, so recently I've been working on the E36 a lot, and I got it to the point where it's pretty much ready to drive. I just need to do some of the wiring, um, such as the starter and the fuel pump. So I kind of realized I didn't like a lot of the way the harness was, and a lot of what I already deleted was kind of only cut to the fuse box. So there was a lot of stuff I still could cut fully out. I had an impulse decision to pull the whole harness out of the car. Before I pulled the harness all the way up and got everything to the fuse box, but I never went through and pulled it completely out. I run my headlight wiring and some of my other wiring for my fan and stuff like that in the main harness. So I decided to pull this thing out and do it the right way and uh, make it easier on myself where it's not inside the car. I need to run my fuel pump to a switch and I wanted to avoid going to the fuse box. I wanted to use an inline fuse. I wanted to run my fan on a switch as well. So I've been going through and tracing the fuel pump and I kind of figured it out now. So the black plug on the bottom is the fuel pump. It has two wires coming out of it, a green one which is power and the ground. Um, my ground right now is running just straight to my battery. Um, I'm probably going to end up just trimming it back to here and just grounding it somewhere back here. But basically I have the green wire running from the fuel pump all the way up to here which where I spliced in a 40 amp fuse and from that 40 amp fuse it hits a switch. Here's the switches for my fan and my fuel pump. So I went through to the ignition and I found which one was key on accessories and that's this purple wire right here. So when I found out that the purple wire was key on accessories I pulled back some of the wiring right here and then I, I spliced it off and then I soldered in a, another line which goes to here which is the jumper for my, my 12 volts to my switches but then key on so the switches will not work so therefore with the key off I get nothing from the switch now key on one click so key on one click it's gonna be hard for you to hear but that's my fuel pump going so now I gotta do the same thing with my fan and then I gotta kinda figure out my starter situation because this car is having a problem starting alright my main battery is dead and wouldn't hold a charge um, let me make sure this works real quick. Alright, fuel pump's working. So I got a jump starter. Um, last time I just had it running, I realized the ground fell off for the fuel pump. That's why it cut off. So, this should start it. Well, it started, but I am dying in here with these gas fumes. The thing is just headers right now. It ran. That's all that matters. I'm, I actually wired the starter. I was having problems with the starter last time, and I thought I was going to have to just wire it separately because it seemed like something was messed up along to the key ignition um, from the swap, maybe, but I actually figured it out, and it was this black and yellow wire which comes off the ignition. It was actually just a loose connection, so as you can see, I had to re-solder it because right here it was like bent or something and uh, it was cracked off. I don't know if I did it when I was going through the car, uh, maybe when I was doing the cage or something, I cut it. I just gotta figure out how I wanna run all these wires, run my fan, and then uh, we have a working car. The plan right now is to get these wheels off uh, just because I can't drive the car with them on anyway, so they're kind of just wasting time. Take these wheels, and these are 225, 40, 18. Um, I was going to run 235s, but I think I'm going to throw these tires on uh, a pair of my new wheels. Wheels off, going to load them up. Uh, I'm going to have to pull this bug out because Daniel's about to pull his car in here and uh, work on the Mercedes a little bit. So, a few things, and then uh, we'll load up the new wheels, and then let's get going. I totally forgot I would need new valves for those wheels too, so I had to get valve stems. Demounting my old tires, throwing those on the new rims, putting valve stems in, and then we should be good. I just need my adapters. That's literally all I'm waiting on is my adapters and then I can drive my car. It's so pointless. It's so stupid. Ooh. It's gonna have still um, a three quarter inch spacer, so it's gonna have some poke, but that's good. I didn't want it to be tucked in, so it's gonna look good. You're good? 
<laughs> the, the sweet new drift sim. Thank you to our sponsor, Torque Drift. <laughs> Today, I'm working on the E36. I finally got these wheel adapters. They're custom because my wheels are 5x114 and my hubs are 5x120 because they're German. I need it hub centric. The way it is, is when I have my lug nuts holding the adapter onto the wheel, they stick out too far for the wheel to fit flush. So I had to go through and cut all my lug nuts like stubby, but I had to make sure the ratchet still worked on it. So this is what I got now. So this is what I got out of it. The short, short stubby lug nuts and then they fit flush now. So now I can put my wheel on the adapter, but. So I just got one more to cut for this side and now I gotta do the whole other side. That company I ordered those from took two months and then when I hit them up after a month of waiting, I asked about them and they didn't even make them yet. They had to be custom made. Terrible, it took so long, but now with those in, I should be able to actually drive my car. That's really all I've been waiting on. So I should be able to finally put the car on the ground today and see it with the new wheels on it. All right, so the wheels fit really good. That's max angle right there. And the tire is barely rubbing the frame back there, but I'm gonna figure out like a bump stop ideal, but that's right before the caliper hits the arm, so. The rear footman is like insane. I don't know if I have to get a smaller spacer or just send it, but the lug nuts they gave me won't work because I can't even get a socket on there with them in. So I have to get some lug nuts there deeper, <clears throat> but it looks like it's gonna be close back here, so. I'm probably gonna raise it up a little bit anyways, and uh, maybe on the other tires I'll get a little bit more stretched and either try to fit it, or I'll get a smaller adapter when I order the other ones, since I only got two right now. But, dude, it looks so good. That fitment looks so good. The front looks so aggressive. And so i kind of been doing a bad job with keeping up, um, updating on the E36, because I've been waiting on parts and everything like that. Once I got the wheel adapters on, I couldn't use the lug nuts that they gave me because they're too short, and they were falling within the wheel. So I had to order lug nuts. It's all on now. I took the whole body kit off so I can do my final fitting of everything with it off. I have to trim some of the side skirt and stuff like that because my wheels when they turn. But look how mean this thing looks on the ground. Um, so technically right now I can drive it. I don't want to drive it crazy because the brakes, um, I had just bled them and they kind of feel a little weird right now so I'm not going to go on the actual street. But I should be able to start it and get it in gear and actually start rolling this thing. Make sure everything's up to good. I haven't rolled it with the diff, uh, with the welded diff or anything. So. I think this might be the first drive in the E36, boys. It's like 8 o'clock at night, too. Right when you give it gas, bro, it's going to be so loud. I know. Front left wheel looks like it's so far in. Sounds good though. I said, I said your alignment's so bad. Oh, I know. This one's towed in like crazy. I know. I just see the light I did with my eyes. That one looks good. That one's terrible. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like a, a truck on the highway with a bad alignment. It looks like the thing's riding sideways because the bed. It kind of looks like that from the back. I think the bus is cooler though. Well, you can't put dirt bikes and mopeds in that, but this thing, this thing is a different level. Bro. It drives. Definitely drives. It literally drives. Ignore the ugly orange wheels. I have to wait till my other adapters come in so I can put my other uh, XXRs on the back. Oh man. I really cannot believe that ran. Like I know it should run, but like I don't know. I just thought I was gonna have way more problems to deal with right now. It still has a lot to work out before I can actually go and actually drive it, but the thing rolls, that's all that matters. 
I'm so stoked. I can't wait to start drifting this thing though. I need to tune up a lot of more stuff. I need to get my adapters for the back wheels, um, wire a lot more things in. But uh, it runs. Like, that's all that matters, bro. And then we're going to be doing dirt bikes soon. Soon this is going to need a hitch so we can actually pull the drift car. Yeah. You understand that? Oh, dang. Dude, you know how many times I've hit my head on this AC that. unit already? The same thing. We found out the seats fold up in the bus like this, so it already has so much room. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. More to come with the E36, and uh, I can't wait to slide this thing. You got a thing to say? No, that's it. Later.